my maternal grandfather's business in Cheapside. By the time I reached the age of 25, I had made 20,000 pounds and was giving my whole time to the task of making money. My mind was tending to materialism and agnosticism, but in 1873, through ambition, I lost nearly all and set to work again to make more. By the gentle influence of my wife and of my aunt, my thoughts were turned in another direction. I then came out boldly for Christ and threw in my lot with the great moody and sanky missions. In 1880, I threw up business and entered college with a view to ordination, and in 1882, I became curate of St. Mary Abbot's Kensington. I felt then, as now, that the church's great task is amongst the vast masses outside, and that a series of open-air meetings in Kensington and Westminster, the best helpers proved to be working men who could tell in the homely language of the workshop of what Christ had done for them. We started the church army to train these working men and women to be lay evangelists in the church. We chose the most degraded districts of England and were knocked about like nine pins for our pains. Shortly afterwards, we initiated a series of labor homes in which we could help ex-prisoners, tramps, and also honest men in distress. From these small beginnings, a colossal work has grown with branches and outposts in all parts of the world. Our pictures stress the fact of aggressive evangelism and of personal contact. And this is at the basis of all the social as well as of the evangelistic work. In the so-called social side, we distrust the shortcut. We believe that the kingdom of heaven has to be born within the individual soul. We believe that it is not so much what is done for men, but what is done in men. On that foundation, we have built our society in the years that are past. On that same basis, we shall continue it in the years that are to come.